the two variables changing are the number of songs that you all can download and therefore the cost that each of you or the price each of you pays is different. So the independent variable always associate that with a cause and the dependent because it depends on this so that makes sense is always the effect. Okay so here we have a little chart here a little table of values the number of songs and the cost. If you download zero songs, how much are you going to pay? Five bucks. Everyone pays a flat monthly fee. I mean, why would anyone do that? I don't know, but that's going to be five dollars. Okay. If you then, on top of that five dollars, you download five songs, each song being ten cents each, how much additional money is that going to be? 50 cents. So total, this person will pay 550. 10 songs, 10 cents each is going to be an, an additional dollar. So that would be six dollars total. The original five plus the 10 songs times 10 cents. And then 20 songs, how many additional dollars is that? Two dollars. So five plus two is seven. Okay. So here's the more common phrase that we start to use in algebra two versus algebra one. <coughs> We say that the cost is a function of the number of songs. Y is a function of X. That's because Y depends on X. Okay, Y is changing as a result of X changing. So Y, whatever your Y variable is, they'll always phrase it as that y variable is a function of the x variable. Okay? And I wrote down under here y depends on x. So a lot of your word problems this year that you'll come across will start off as um, the value of a car is a function of its age. The value of a car is a function of its age. So you immediately know that the value of the car, that's your y variable, is a function of because it depends on the age of the car. And the age of the car would be your independent variable or your x. Okay? Um, so in this particular, that's just a little vocab we have to be fluent with when we read it. But part b asks us to write an equation that models this scenario. Well, we're going to let cost be c. I already wrote that above. So your cost equals, and how do we calculate our overall cost for all of these? Put in. Perfect. And she used S because that was my number of songs variable that I defined. Okay, you could have defined it as X if you wanted to. But it's 10 cents times however many songs you have plus the additional $5 monthly fee. Okay? So now this wants us to graph it. Now, when you're asked to graph stuff on the regents or any time, you need to pay attention to the instructions. This only wants us to graph it from zero songs up until 40 songs. It doesn't want us to graph it for <coughs> negative five songs. Right? Simply because that doesn't make any sense. Right? How could you download negative five songs? So if you notice, you can't go back into the negatives on your x-axis. They kind of cut that off for you. And then they only want us to go up to 40 songs. And they were nice enough to scale this for us. But you, you would oftentimes have to scale it on your own and know to start it at zero, end it at 40. Okay? Not that you can't download more than 40 songs, but they're just telling us only they want to see this graph to 40. Now, we know this starts at $5. Zero songs, $5. But we want to scale this so that it's going to fit the entire graph. So we know that it's zero songs is paired with $5. Let's, because our graph is ending at 40, let's quick figure out what would we get for 40 songs. Okay, so we would just maybe use your, your uh, calculator, 0 0.10, 10 cents times, you can just watch me here, times 40 songs plus the $5, that's going to be $9, okay? So when it comes time to scaling your graph, 
let's make sure we use this only up to where we need, only up to $9, or at most $10 maybe if you want to keep things even, okay? So I don't want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's going to waste a lot of space, right? I would not use any of this if I did that. So how can I scale this to account for the fact that I want to use the majority of the graph? Go ahead, Andy. Where are you, Andy? Andrew. So could you, don't do this yet, could you start at 5? <coughs> this definitely has to be 0, but you can do what is called a line break. You can do that. It would be one too many. Okay, so then you could count do every 4 if you wanted. So 1, 2, 3, 4 would make 6. 1, 2, 3, 4 would make 7. 1, 2, 3, 4 would make 8. 1, 2, 3, 4 would make 9. That works. I like it. Because it, this way, he's not wasting the space between 0 and 4 either, is he? Right? The other way, and I'll just quick do a sketch that I was thinking, would be to start at 0 and then every other. So you'd go 1, 2, 3, 4. And we would have fitted all the way up to 10, but the problem is we wouldn't have used any of this space. <coughs> so by using a line break, he maximized his space, okay? Now other things that you'll always have to do with graphs so you don't lose points. Label. This is the number of songs. And this is the cost. And usually if there's a unit, like dollars, we'll put a dollar sign in parentheses. Okay? Now, it says to use the table feature of your calculator. I think we know how to do that, but I definitely want to review it quickly. To use the table feature, you have to go to your y equals. I do want you to do this along with me. Go to your y equals. If there's anything there, clear it out. And we need 0.10 times our x. We can't, we don't have an s button, but we just want to type that in. And then our table is in blue. It says under above graph in, in blue it says table. So we hit our second button, which is also blue, and look at the table. Now, my table is starting at one and counting up by ones. Yes? Um, I don't know that I want to count by ones. I want to graph this. Right now I know that I have the point zero five, so I'm going to put a dot there. And I also know I have the point 40 with a 9. But I don't want every individual point in between there, right? Nor do I feel like scrolling to the 10 and then to the 20. So on your calculator above the window button, you also have this table set feature, yes? Okay. Hit second table set, and we can change some things about how our graph or how our table shows us. So like I said, my table started at 1. Let's say we want it to start at 0. And then we want the change in table. We don't want it to count by 1s and give us every individual extra song price. We want to maybe count by 10s. So this little triangle in math, I don't know if you know this, but it means the change in. Little triangle. You maybe did it with slope change in y over change in x. Have you ever seen that? Okay, so you've seen that symbol before. Here it is on your calculator. That's how you want your table to change. Now, once I set that and I go back to table, now I'm only looking at critical zero songs, 10 songs, 20 songs, 30 songs. So I can plot these points on my graph. So 10 songs goes with $6. 20 songs goes with $7. And 30 songs goes with $8. And I pull that without having to really sift through <coughs> that chart. Now when I connect it, am 
am I forgetting anything that you can think of? Andrew. Labeling the, the line, very good. So we'll, we can say C equals 0.10S plus 5. Very good. Anything else? Lydia? I'm glad you said that because that is a, a point of interest and Mason's shaking his head no. Mason, why not here? Right, because they were so specific about their domain, their x values, they want you to cut your graph off at 40. Otherwise, you would have been graphing it from 0 to infinity, right? That would be graphing it for all x is greater than 0. So again, a place where you just, it seems like such a small detail, but it makes a big difference as to where you may or may not lose points on the regions, okay? And do I, I definitely don't want to take off a point for that, but unfortunately, we just have to follow what they tell us, you know, and how to grade it. So just pay attention to little details like that, okay? All right, so we jump down to the next example. It wants us to use our table feature again to determine the range of the function. So here's our new function, given these domain value x's, okay? So we're going to go back to our y equals, and we're going to plug in the new function that they want us to look at, 2x squared minus 8. Then I'm going to use the table feature, but I'm not just going to jump right to the table because look what happens when I do. It's still counting by tens. I don't want that, right? I want to set my table, so I go to second and then this window button with table set above it. And where do I want my table to start based on the domain they gave me? Negative 13. And what should I count by? if I want it to at least include two. Just one. Just count by ones. Good. Now when I look at my table, it's going to start at negative 13. So my first y value is 330. And then what's happening to my y values? They are doing what? Increasing? Oh, wait. I want to go. Yeah. Are they increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. So it, the maximum was 330. And when I go all the way down to it's at zero. But did you watch what happened to the y's? It went down from 330 to zero to negative six to negative eight, and then it turned around and it starts increasing again to negative six and then back to zero. So the maximum y value, the maximum domain value, or the range value, determine the range, that's y values. So those are your y values. Actually, we won't even talk about that yet. The maximum was what? 330. And that was occurring at negative 13. Yes? Okay. So do you see how my domain includes negative 13? It uses less than or equal to. Okay. So we want to use that or equal to symbol on the 330 that goes along with that negative 13. Yes? And then my lowest value was what? Negative 8. Okay, even though it ended at 0, my lowest value was negative 8. And that happened when x was 0, which is fully included in this domain. So my lowest value was negative 8, and we actually reached that. Now, I'm just going to give you a quick, we're going to do it as part of this next example. You have to understand how to set your window, okay? And you use your domain and range to do that. So if I want to look at this graph, if I just hit graph, well, my window is set up from something a long time ago, a lot of yours will immediately do this, right? But you're not seeing all of your graph along the domain that they've requested. So we always go to our window key in the event that we want to graph it appropriately to the domain that was provided. Your window, your x minimum needs to be negative 13. Your x maximum needs to be 2. 
And then for your range values, your lowest was negative 8, your highest was 330, and you're going to get a much better feel for what that table we were looking at was reflecting. Remember it was decreasing, 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 it went down to negative 8, and then it started increasing again. Okay, so you can see that now that you've reflected that table in the graph by fixing your window. Okie doke. Okay, really quickly on the back, when you look at functions or not functions, do you remember the vertical line test right there? Okay, this one is not a function because it fails the vertical line test. When I draw a vertical line, I can find a vertical line that hits it twice. That means it's not a function. This one is a function, because any vertical line I draw only hits it once. Is a function. Okay? We're going to talk about relationship B, because it's the only function here. Take a minute and try to figure out what the x-intercepts are for that. Where is this graph? Is relationship B? Thank you. <laughs> no. 